Hello everyone and uh, welcome to this exciting breakout deep dive with the Atlon Donlan Alliance. Uh, we have with us today Tom Callahan, who is CEO of Donlan, uh, I think one of the largest fleet management companies in the US, and Marcel Kobes, Chief Commercial Officer of Atlon, uh, one of the leading European mobility providers. Welcome guys, welcome. Eh? Today, thank you, thank you. today we're going to talk with both gentlemen about the challenges and the opportunities of global fleet management and what they would recommend to their customers and prospects when talking about an integrated global approach towards fleet and mobility. And of course, today is also part or day in a special year because if I'm not mistaken, there is an anniversary today and it's not the anniversary of Tom and his uh, and his wife. No, it's the anniversary of the Atlon Dolan Alliance. I think you guys are 10 years together. So congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. 10 <laughs> years. Awesome. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> that's a wooden that's a wooden anniversary or something like that. Eh? So congratulations again. It felt, um, it felt almost like it like like a marriage, right, Tom? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's good. Um, before we remember start, the first day. <laughs> Before we start, to the audience, um, if you have any questions for either Tom or Marcel, please do put them in the chat on the right-hand side of your screen. And if there's still time in the end, we'll do a short Q&A uh, with both of them and try to answer as much of the questions we can. So, gentlemen, hello, welcome again. I, I hope that you've been enjoying the conference uh, thus far. Um, we're we're going to kick off immediately, and I think we'll kick off with Marcel with a question to him. It's a very direct question. Um, if we're talking about global fleet management, then we're obviously at the Global Fleet Conference. Eh? Uh, we're talking about global fleet management. We're talking a lot about alignment across uh, the globe. Do you believe eh, that a one-size-fits-all approach towards global fleet management actually works? And if it doesn't, uh, what are the differences that you see across the regions? Uh, and and why, why are those challenges there? Thank you for the question, uh, Swen. Uh, we are a global lease company, no doubt about that. So there are really benefits to, to, to service our customers on a global, on a global way. Um, but we also see differences in, in regions. So we always say we need to have the best of both worlds. So there are specific dynamics um, that requires a different approach in, in, in markets. And when it comes to legislation, uh, but also from a maturity perspective, some markets are already ready for uh, the transition towards EV already or already there, and in some markets not. So there will be always uh, different requirements and demands in specific markets. Okay. Tom, your point of view on that? Yes, I agree. You know, in partnership uh, with Athlon, uh, we look at though. This, I mean, you look at the regulatory, regulatory look at environmental, environmental maturity, uh, taxation, the lease models as well are different. Uh, so I don't think there's a one size fits all. You have to understand the unique requirements of each region and make sure you listen to your customer for the best solutions possible. And what and what are those things that you do believe should be addressed at a, at a let's say more global level? Uh, um, and because indeed I can understand because of the local differences or regional differences that you that you want to address those specifically or you have to almost address those specifically. But what are the let's say more global things that you do offer towards your customers and, and, and prospects? If I may, I think two areas that I think have some global opportunities. One, I think telematics and the opportunity to connect vehicles, I think can be a global opportunity, as well as I think safety is an area that across the globe has implications for everybody and I think can have more of a uniform approach. Okay. Yeah, and in addition, I would also say, uh, as I said before, uh, how to service our customer in a global way also when it comes to reporting uh, it's it's tco management so a customer should not sense that there's an there's an there are uh, they're, that they are treated in a different way uh, or locally because we have specific local uh, uh, customer value propositions but the customer is is steered via one central organization and, and i think that's that's the best example and is yeah, that, i think is that's that important so they don't have to go from uh, one portal so they see as much of their information as possible uh, to be able to manage the entire fleet. Okay. 
And is is uh, because uh, indeed that's part of the technology uh, that is available within within our industry. Obviously, is global reporting, is those kind of things. What 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 other priorities might there be for let's say global fleet managers today when looking at at technology or e EVs? I mean, what do you think should be on top of mind of those global fleet managers that we have with us today? I think as far as like, go ahead, Marcel. Sorry. No, yeah. Uh, we already we already touched it, and it is, is high on the agenda. Also in this conference, you see the whole transition now towards electrification. Yeah, I already said that some markets are really already there. Look at Belgium, look at the Netherlands, but you see it now coming in every market. And and I and I if I mean, if I uh, go back in time four years ago, eh, when after the merger, um, electrification was maybe not that high on our agenda even internally when it comes to, to, to a global view in every market, but it's we cannot avoid it anymore. It's coming. Most of our customers are having really a KPI on a zero, being zero emission, uh, have to zero emission in 2022. So 2025. I would, yeah. I would agree. Even in North America, there's been a shift, obviously, in the political situation, but we are being asked by our customers to at least give us a portion of their fleets have the potential to be electrified. And look, we all know that in vans and trucks, for example, that the product isn't there, but it will be there over the next couple of years. And so as the product proliferation begins and uh, we get more comfortable with the assessment, battery costs continue to come down. Uh, there's a use case in a number of, of situations for electrification. So I think that's something that's gonna gain uh, traction and I think the other thing that I would recommend uh, and, uh, and something that, that we've learned from Europe, I think uh, Europe is further ahead in some of these areas. And so from a North American perspective, I think it's important for companies like Donlin to pay attention to what's going on there, practices there to incorporate into their North American view. That makes, uh, that makes perfect sense. And it's it, uh, talking about, okay, acceleration when it comes to towards EV integrations and things like that. Do you think or do you believe that COVID or the, the pandemic has had an impact on that? And not only about EVs, but also looking at working from home, uh, 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 well, the entire fleet industry and everything that has to do with mobility. Does, has COVID-19 effectively impacted that? And, and, and how, how big will the impact be uh, going forward? Uh, Tom, perhaps you? Yeah, I think it happens by industry. We, we've had some industries for example, that were very strong going into the pandemic and have remained strong or stronger. But there have been other industries, uh, some of the sales areas, uh, insurance, uh, have we've looked at utilization and there's been some vehicles that have sat idle. And so you have to look at, is this the right model? People are looking at their car policies. Is that really the right policy we need? So based upon that, I think the pandemic has really ask the essential question, should we have a car policy? What does it mean? We have some of these idle vehicles, other ad additional opportunities, maybe instead of a company car in densely urban areas, do we need some mobility solutions in addition to vehicles? These are all questions that we've been challenged by our customers to come up with. And the other thing is people have realized that look, even in sales roles, Zoom or Teams, can drive the process. It might not close the deal, but it is piece of the sales process. Therefore, it has impacted even the utilization of sales cars. And if I if I may add, eh, because we we already for a long time ago are focusing on the shift towards sustainable mobility, eh, uh, less less cars instead of more cars. And the thing and the main the main issue also within our customers was always how can we change the behavior of our employees. Uh, that was always a hot topic. So the speed, it was always on the agenda, uh, but the speed now due to COVID, it, you cannot stop it anymore. Uh, if you look internally to our own, our own company, we shift immediately in whole Europe uh, from working uh, to uh, going to the office every day to fully work, work remotely. Uh, and we, we succeed in that, and that counts for the whole market. And that definitely do has an impact on, uh, on, uh, on the fleet. Okay. If that, that impact, has it been real concrete already, for example, in Europe, uh, Marcel? So in the sense that have you seen a lot of uh, contract extensions, uh, those kind of things, I can imagine. But uh, but can you quantify that a little bit? Can you give us a little bit of a view? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe not in hard numbers, but the extensions was really high on the agenda and it counts uh, for probably for every year, for every lease go, every lease go. 
um, but you see in our in our specifically in our larger cars there we consider do we now need to proceed with uh, the amount of lease cars as that we have, have that we have in our car policy before COVID. So they are they are really rethinking now them to make a transition to a broader mobility uh, policy even where the the lease car uh, as we know it uh, as as we know it all will be less uh, less high on the agenda as it was uh, as it was before COVID. So that's currently happening. So so that's happening. Then the, the the shift towards sustainable mobility. So the shift to fully electrification was already high on the agenda. We see now really that it's going to be accelerated, uh, and the flexibilization. And it was also high on the agenda, uh, so that that's that's currently uh, where we all are, are very busy with. Okay. In combination, yeah. yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I also think the pandemic has again reinforced the importance of cash to businesses, and so we are seeing additional emphasis on leasing and sale leasebacks to generate cash for these, especially these mid-market companies. Okay. Okay, then I think we have time. We have time for one more question. Also, the audience, if you if you have any questions, please just put them in the chat. But I uh, I have I have one as well. Still, um, if uh, we have, we have a lot of global fleet managers, as I mentioned here uh, at the conference itself, uh, and uh, of course they are looking at not only uh, manufacturers and, and new connectivity or technology solutions and things like that. They are all obviously also looking at uh, fleet management and leasing. Um, if somebody goes out for a global fleet management strategy or to search or set up a global fleet management strategy, what tip or what piece of advice can you, uh, Marcel and Tom, uh, give them? And what's the, 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 the biggest tip that you can give to those global fleet managers? Marcel. Yeah, I should say be prepared for the future. Uh, I, I think we are, and we are discussing it for a longer time, but it will be more actual than before. I think the product as such a lease contract with an average duration of four years and 40,000 kilometers will be at the end of this life cycle. So when we have the possibility uh, to reinvent ourselves uh, from scratch, I should say our product should be flexible, sustainable, uh, digital, uh, and, and, and above transparent. So from the customer perspective, you see already a shift in demands for your employees. So how can you offer your uh, your employees a kind of mobility package which also has a clear fit with their demands and that's 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 changing rapidly um, so be prepared for the future and also uh, looking then differently to your demands that you have from your lease code how can you how can your lease code help you help you to make that transition internally okay so without without adding complexity to your processes sorry Thanks. try to keep it as simple as possible i agree uh, the other thing I would say to reinforce that is your fleet goals have to support your corporate goals. So be aware of what your overall corporate and sustainability goals, because fleet has to play a, a, a part in that, a big part now. Uh, a lot of our, it's a significant piece of their overall operating expenses. It's important. So you need, as a fleet manager, understand what your corporate goals are to support that. You'll get that support from the C-suite if you're aligned, and that's important. And to Marcel's point, it's changing. And so I think in the future, there's gonna be more discussion around how are you meeting your sustainability goals with a combination of whether it's mobility or whether it's electrification or a smarter way of getting your vehicles and a policy that incorporates sustainability. Great, all right. Then uh, I think we we will uh, we we did a good job because we didn't see a lot of questions popping in so that's uh, that's great so I want to thank both of you Tom uh, Marcel for this uh, very nice discussion um, uh, I wish you of course another wonderful ten years together uh, and that we can reach the twenty year anniversary and then I hope I'll I'll get an invite for uh, for for the party um, and uh, thanks again for for your support also to this conference and uh, of course stay tuned uh, because we have a lot more exciting things happening at the global fleet conference